do, we'll kick off. So um, can you tell the people who are watching, listening, lurking, what you do for a business? So behind me, I've actually changed my screen around. Dave, wave. Hey, Hello. Dave, wave. Is Dave a raver who waves? <laughs> my wonderful care manager because I need a wonderful care manager because we provide lots of lovely support for lots of lovely older people within their own home. And that's what we do. So we're home instead. And actually, that's backwards. Um, there, my map of where we support lovely people is right behind me. So I'm home instead, Portsmouth. We are home instead, Portsmouth. Our lovely Emma is out seeing a client at the moment, introducing a new caregiver to a client. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is who we are. And actually, I'm going to start. Actually, Nigel, I'm going to reverse this a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to give you. <laughs> I love your face. Look <laughs> Oh no, she didn't tell me this was happening. I'm going to give you a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Welcome. So, Age UK, according to Age UK, how many people over the age of 75 in the UK live alone? Ooh, ooh. Uh, I would say easily 75%. Oh no, 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 in terms of how many people are there? Living alone over the age of 75. Oh, in terms of a number, an actual number. number. Oh my gosh. Um, probably <laughs> 1, 1. 1.2 million. You're not, well, you're a little bit out. 2 million people. And this is actually quite aged data, actually. 2 million people over the age of 75 live on their own. Of those 2 million, how many people in that category say they don't see or speak to anybody for a month or more? 1.9 million? No, no, you were close to you, but, but half of them, half of those people reckon they don't see or talk to anybody for a month or more. That's for me, tragedy. that's just an absolute tragedy. So my personal mission is to eradicate loneliness. Loneliness kills people Absolutely. at the same rate as if you smoke 15 cigarettes a day. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just a shocking statistic. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's not one that I can personally stomach. We've all just gone through lockdown. We yeah. have all experienced what it's like to not see people. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I'm hoping that as a nation, we've got a better understanding now of what that actually means because yeah. they aren't just numbers. Yeah. There are people in your street yeah. that haven't spoken to anybody for a really long time. Yeah. Seek them out, yeah. make a difference. Yeah. And you know that the point of Home Instead, we've actually got a mission in our mission is to change the face of aging. That's yeah. our yeah. national mission. There's, I think there's 226 offices in the UK now. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and in fact, I, last week, I had the privilege of speaking to the very lovely Sean Payne, who I will put you in touch with, actually, who is the first ambassador for Age Scotland. Oh, OK. And so actually, he is on a mission to kind of help that. And I put him in touch with our local owners up in Scotland. Yeah. Because actually what we are discovering and what I am thankfully discovering is that there are lots of people who are on the same mission as us yes they may just not have it banded yeah yeah and actually what we need to find are those collective people when i'm networking now i'm looking for people who understand what it is we're trying to do yeah. because as much as we can wave the banner and do all of those things we can't do it alone yeah you need to join it needs to be like a, like a joined up network of, of different providers and support networks who are all working towards that goal because i think it is terrible really as a as a country how lonely we have actually become yeah um and, and, and you know you do see it you do go down to the shop and see the little old lady and you know, she's kind of like struggling to do a change. You're kind of wondering if she's going home to an empty house and yeah. you hope she's going to be all right. And um, and in the olden days, you know, you would know about Mrs. Green over the road, all husbands, guys, you know, go over there, make her some cake. I think it's, it's, a, it's a weird world we live in where I suppose, I suppose this is something which needs to be ingrained within society, maybe. Um, I, I think it's really interesting because you talk about the people that you're seeing out in the shops 
that actually you're wondering what happens to them when they go home. I'm wondering about what the people that haven't actually got to, got the, to shop. the shop. Yeah. yeah. You know, and actually, as much as Mrs. Green, she's having a difficult day, she's having a conversation with somebody yeah, and she's true. out and she's doing something independently. Yeah herself one of the key things that we do and actually we do really well is we start from a position of strength if i if i talk to you about things you do well yeah, you're yeah. blossom yeah. it's easy you know actually you you, you grow and you, you physically grow in stature don't you you yeah. oh i can do this and i can do that really well if i start talking to you about things that you can't do so well and you, you start to kind of withdraw into yourself. The door's there. The door's there. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Yeah. So when we look at being with other people, older people, we focus on what they do well first. Yes. Let's yeah. build on that. Yeah. Because absolutely. I want you to feel good about yourself. Yeah. I don't want you to focus on what's not going well in your life. Yeah. Let's focus on what's going well. And for Mrs. Green, she's a great example. She's out in the shops. Yeah. Yeah. Hooray. Where else can we go, Mrs. Green? Yeah. Where yeah. else do you want to go? You can go. That's lovely. Let's go for a paddle in the sea. Yeah. Let's go wing walking. Well done, oh. the office. You know, it's actually, okay. you know, what is possible in my background, as I said to you once before, is in primary school teaching. To me, my demograph has changed. The outcome for people hasn't. It doesn't yeah. matter whether you are eight or 88. You have yeah. a potential. Yeah. You have desires. You have dreams. You have hopes. Yeah. And actually, I want to find out what those are and make them happen. Boom. That's it. I can feel your energy, man. I'm like, what? <laughs> I love it. Honestly, no, I absolutely love it. And in fact, what you can't see in the kind of wall that is facing Dave, and I just wandered out of the office. Uh -huh. There is a quote on our wall, and it says, a life well lived should continue at home. Boom. That, you know, if I told you that you had to continue your life, but you had to continue it in some way you hadn't chosen, you didn't want to be, and actually we're doing it for your own good. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Why can't we make where you are the, the place, best place yeah, for the best you? Place for you make it right for you one of our other offices and it was one of the very first occasions i actually had to listen to home instead and what they did well was over a lovely lady in the northeast who had two clients it was a couple that she looked after who had dementia and they wanted to go on holiday and actually they were very nervous and got very disoriented out of their own environment very quickly yeah but they had a lifelong dream to go out to Geneva. And so she went to the hotel first in Geneva and made it look like their lounge. Wow. And then Amazing. You know, and actually that is thinking what's right for somebody for, for else. What's right, right for the person, yeah. Rather than a, a one that. size fits all kind of way of doing things, base it around. And, and they do a similar thing with, um, with, with dementia. Um, uh, when they go in, in when they do go into um, care because i know yep. they do try and uh, make sure that there's as much of their kind of home surroundings absolutely uh, are there for them to kind of relate to so oh fantastic i tell you what it, it's um wow I, I can i can feel the passion that you have for this business what, what what inspired you what was you know what was the what was the kind of start of this what what made you think this is the way i need to go um so I didn't expect actually, to, it, it, it's an interesting kind of personal journey that I had to come into the business. I came in as a, 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 an outcome of something that happened in my own personal life that took us all by surprise. And actually in doing that, I've never looked back. I, it took me, you know, the, these funny little things happen out the sky. Yeah. And actually, you think, how am I going to deal with that? How am I going to manage that? And actually, sometimes those are the best decisions for this. So when the, the original, so this is our third of my third venture in Homestead's franchising world. Yeah. yeah. The first one was in, in, the, in Mid-Surrey. 
And when we bought that original franchise, it had one franchise of the year, I think at that point for the second time. And within that, it had attracted 1400 applications for franchises that year. And of that, they released only 18 offices. And the reason they only released 18 offices, Nigel, is because they could only find 18 of us that understood why. Quality, values. You know, and actually there are a lot of people out there that think that private care provision is just owned by a lot of people that want to just make an awful lot of money. And actually the majority of people that turned up for franchises that year fell under that bracket. Yeah, yeah. This isn't. So one of the things that actually we do as, and we do well, if I care for you, and there are lots of people out there that are caring for people, it's great. Does a really lovely job, that person feels better. Yeah. What you want from me though, is for me to care about you. Because not only will I care for you, yes. I'll keep thinking about you when yeah. we've gone away. Yeah. What happens with you, to you, for you and about you becomes part of me. Yes, yes. So as home instead, we recognise that fundamental difference between caring for somebody. Yeah, job. Job. Yeah, yeah. And caring about them. Yeah. And it comes back to that strength-based approach over, if I care about you, I want you to feel really good about yourself. I want you to feel great. I want you to look forward to when I come again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And be a part of your week, be a part of your life. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you again because you're a part of my world. Fantastic. And that's how we do this. And so when I'm looking for caregivers. Yes, I was, we, about, I was about to ask you about that actually. <laughs> yes, when, we were, when we're looking for caregivers, we are looking for people that understand that difference. Yeah. Are you how, how, do you, how do you measure that though? Because that must be so difficult to kind of measure. I mean... Okay, so it's quite easy, actually. Oh. It, and it is actually a really easy thing to see. So I'll give you a little story about a lovely caregiver that I had called Linda. Linda was recounting to me her neighbour who is a carer. Her neighbour is absolutely a guest that we have a minimum of an hour or two visit. So we go for that whole hour. Yeah. Her neighbour was telling her how proud she was of the fact that she would start a six o'clock p.m. shift and she would get back for half past eight. But she should be working till 10. But if she got round everybody quickly enough, she could be home for half past eight. Cue Benny Hill music. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was a real... And they sh those people, for all the wrong reasons, stand out. Yes, I can, I, ca I can see 15 people tonight. Don't worry, I'll get around all of your clients. You've missed the point. But is that, is that and obviously I don't want to get too political here and have you know, other organisations throwing eggs and stuff, but is that a, a constraint because of the time available to the carers? Is that like okay, a, so a top-down top kind of directive? The um, flip side to that is a caregiver who came in for an interview for me on a Monday who had been working for a different care provider on the, on the Sunday. She had been given 22 one hour clients to see in her eight hour shift. You do the maths, doesn't quite figure. Happened in time, somebody missed out. <laughs> Several people missed out. Or they only got five or ten minutes and she ran in, are you okay today, Mrs. Jones? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. And well, what's, okay, what's, fine. The, what, what, what's the point of that? Because especially for someone who may have dementia, you you, you just are this stranger who to, you know, and it's so wonderful, you know, I've had someone in my house today and you, you, you know, you, you know, no you haven't. Yes, I have, no you haven't. And it's these carers who are running in saying hi and then <laughs> making a cup of tea and doing one. And they have done nothing within it. And this particular caregiver who came for this interview is the epitome of what we want. So in answer to your question, they shine. Yeah. Because actually she recognized that what she had been given to do yeah. was yeah. fundamentally wrong. Because she didn't, so social services who she worked, so she worked for a social care provider. They were fulfilling a tick box exercise. Ah. We've got 22 clients. 
they have been seen tick in the box the provider themselves were receiving funding for an hour's care. Yeah. So but 20 people. Yeah. Social services think everybody's being seen. A box has been ticked and so yeah. it's moved on. But those caregivers that recognise that, that that is wrong understand but, why. But those, those, are the, those are the ones that you say when they come and you're like, right, when can you start? <laughs> and that's really where it kind of goes. And, and the thing is, it's not social care provision is it meets a fundamental need for a lot of people and i'm yeah. not here to dismiss that yeah. because it does but what it doesn't do is work in cohesion so again as another kind of analogy within that you've got company number one who have bid for and won a breakfast contract okay yeah company number two has bid and won the lunch contract now there's 600 people to see in that contract okay <laughs> 600 people to see at lunchtime they have to block fill all of those with random bods who are quite happy to do as the first lady was run around run in run in run out run in run out they need all of those people to get that done the problem is you've got your lovely mrs jones who may have well we're not going to talk about what she may need or not she doesn't get any choice over when breakfast is. Yeah. She's on a rotor for somebody else. And that breakfast may be somewhere between 6.30 in the morning and 11 o'clock, okay? She may not get her, or she may get her breakfast at 6.30 in the morning, whether she's awake or not. The lunch contract company have lunch from 11 till three. She may then not get her, break, her lunch until three o'clock in the afternoon. Like nine hours between meals between because she's in two different companies two, two time zones from the sands of things two like. different time zones but you've equally got the same lady who may get breakfast at quarter to 11 and lunch at 11 o'clock because they're operating under yeah. you add into the fact that actually if that person has issues with their continents and they're reliant on that support yeah yeah it's a, it's, a scary, it's, a, it's a scary world, actually, when you think of the fact that we are all getting older and, and what does the future hold if we yeah. kind of, if, if there's not more companies like your own and if we carry on on what is the status quo at the moment, it, it, it's quite worrying as to where it's you'll kind scary. of end up. And I think the thing is for us, what we try to get out there is the fact that I come and I find out everything that's important to you, Nigel. That's, that's how we start this. What's important to you? And we start with hearing the client's voice. Yeah. Not what's important to their daughters and to yeah. their sons, but actually that's also important because the family dynamic yeah. must work yeah. Yeah. and they're a yeah. vital component to what we do. But first and foremost, we want to hear what's important to that person. Yeah matters to you because if it matters to you it matters to us so we're going to start with that looking at that outcome for you how can we make that work what's going to improve your day and we're going to start with a point where we're never going to come less than an hour yeah yeah tell me when you need us well actually i don't get up very early in the morning i quite like a slow start can you come for about half past ten fine but we will be there at half past 10. Yeah. And the thing is, if it's Tuesday, it's going to be Sarah. And it's always going to be Sarah at half past 10 on a Tuesday. So that the two of you know, you mentioned dementia earlier on, Nigel. And one of the things you talked about was people getting confused about running in and running out. With all conditions, actually, because Sarah is going at the same time each week, she knows when that condition is changing. Yeah. Yes, of course. So she, yeah yeah and so we can manage that we yeah. can play with that we can plan for it yeah. and see what's happening next yeah yeah, yeah. the care provision that's happening when it's running in doesn't know whether mrs yeah. jones is having a good day or not yeah they've got no clue well they're, they're, they're not taking the time to kind of understand any changes subtle changes that may have happened so and i can vouch for that because when my dad um when he kind of turned up and um, you know, it was a period of three weeks that I noticed yeah. this guy needs help. So really important. Time is important. It's the time that you give others is so important. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you must have had many challenges. Um, give us give us a challenge that you've had to overcome with, 
I mean, your third, your third franchise, you say? Yeah. yeah. Give us so some of the challenges that we've had to overcome. The, the biggest issue I think we always face is a crisis for a client where a client needs change. So here, okay, so another little quiz for you. <laughs> You're full of quizzes, I'll tell you what. Oh my God, you should have talked about could have done some revision. Go on, fire away. Oh, well, before, 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 you, before, before you ask. Hey, Marie Jenkins, thanks for joining us, honey. <laughs> right, fire away, fire away. I'm ready. Go on then. Over the age of 65, how many people have a tumble? How many people have a fall? Percentage this time. Uh, I'd say... 65 is quite young. Let's go with that. Because actually 65 is a young age. Over the age of 65. I would say... 40%. It's actually a third. So 33% of people over the age of 65 are mo more prone to falls. Yes. Now you think, I'm 53 now. Ta -da! Yeah, yeah. Lies. It's all lies. <laughs> I'm actually only 12, but the whole point of that is the fact that actually 12 years from now, I fall into that percentage. I actually will hit that point. And for me, that's quite a scary thought, but actually our world changes very quickly. Yeah. So my lovely Dave behind me. Hey Dave, who waves and used to rave. Woo! We, <laughs> we are currently working on... Uh, on, on putting a client who initially we weren't going to start until the back end of July for a whole host of reasons actually but mostly because yeah. the family were all away and they wanted to be involved and that's lovely. This particular lady had a fall and so from going from starting to look at this at the end of July we're now looking at putting in a wraparound care package for her now because of what happened. So you talk about our challenges, our planning for this lady has gone out of the window because yeah. of a crisis that happened. But it doesn't mean we can't manage the crisis. Yeah. It does yeah. mean we need to reevaluate what we were doing. So that's where all our risk assessment processes come in and why that actually is managed safely so that our caregivers go there in a safe way. Because yeah. if they're not safe, then quite frankly, our clients are never going to be. And then our clients are safe and well looked after and managed. So that's a particular challenge that's happening now that we're sorting out, that we're actually trying to work through. That happened yesterday, in fact. So we're actually working, oh, sorry, Friday. So we're actually working through this as we speak. The other key issue that can bite us is if we get it wrong with our caregivers. Okay. And it's not that we've chosen wrong. Well, I, I kind of liken sometimes to what we've done to a dating agency. Because, <laughs> okay. you know, I'm actually so invested in finding you the right people for you. Yeah, yeah. On the basis of what I know about you and what you've done for me. Of course, it's, what, it's what's below the surface that you can't control. That you can't control. And sometimes we don't get that right. Yeah. But we have fail safes for that. Yeah. So actually, whenever we, and which is where Emma is, so she's not at her desk at the moment, because she is introducing a caregiver to a client. Right. As we speak. Yeah. But we're there to make sure that the actual initial transition, the caregiver hasn't just been sent to an address. Yes, yeah, yeah. Rock up with an intro. I think, that's, I, think, I think that's nice. And I think... That helps the relationship to start off on a nice equal footing um, it, and, and it puts the caregiver in, a, in a, a, an equal position as opposed to you, you know, I've got to get this person to know me first and all that and all the intros. It's, it's, that's a nice way of doing things. And so actually it's depending on what we are doing with the, the client, actually, that, that our introducing person will be there for as long as needed to show, to do whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. And in some cases that won't be very long because actually it's a bit like the first day of school. And actually if you're on the third wheel in that relationship, you, you need to kind of move away quite yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. Think what happens within that. But what we give is not just our client the opportunity to say, hang on a sec, that didn't quite work for me. We give that to our caregivers too. Yeah, yeah. So the following day, yeah. we 
speak to both and go, how yeah. are they for you? Yeah, yeah. Was this person as lovely as we purported to be for you? Are they going to be a really good match for you? Yes or no? And then we review that face to face a fortnight later. We let the, the relationship embed. So we'll have a conversation with you the following day, be it by phone or, or pop in or whatever. Find out how that went for you. Two weeks later, we do a full review. You've had two weeks of what we're doing. Is it what you thought? Actually, I love it. I didn't think I was going to love it this much. Can yeah. I have more of it? Is what actually, you know, it's this. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great process. And I think it shows the care, the caregiver that you've got a vested interest in them and, you know, their thoughts and feelings as well. And I think if, if more companies were run on that kind of, um, that, that kind of, I respect you and I respect how you feel as opposed to you work for me, I'm paying you, get it done. Yeah. You probably find a much happier work. But it is a two-way thing, isn't it? It's, the person's got to be able to um, give their best and, and respect values. And the employee uh, employer has got to, you know, kind of... Well, I think it's, it sounds like an... I, I, it sounds like a utopia. Be careful. You might have people applying <laughs> for jobs after this. <laughs> so, I mean, if somebody... Okay, if, <laughs> if somebody <laughs> wanted to start... Uh, oh, actually, no, no. I almost missed the question out. No, go on. My favourite question. Uh, tell us one thing about you that not many people know about. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing about me. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Even Dave's laughing. He doesn't know what it is yet. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, does that mean you think he's blocking his ears? Um, <laughs> Something about me, I am terrified of bridges. P -p Pardon? I'm terrified of bridges. Bridges? Bridges, yeah, I don't like them. Make oh, me hold on, you live, in, you live in Portsmouth, don't you? I do, and I have to, so if you look behind, <laughs> I live up there, the office is on hailing, I have to cross a bridge every single day to the office. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you not liked bridges? Oh, for as long as I can remember. And it's just, I get properly unnerved on them. Don't ask me to walk over them. I just can't do, do it. Do you, um, so when you're driving on like a high bridge, so like, like, like crossing into Wales or whatever, do you get like vertigo? I just look straight ahead. <laughs> Physically can't look I, I actually get, you know that feeling that you get when you go on a roller coaster yeah. and as it's going down? I think it's like vertigo, isn't it? I get that. I know what you mean. I'm not scared of them, but it's that kind of feeling of... <laughs> I, I have that every single day because I really hear your sister I hear I get the same thing um, <laughs> so um if somebody was crazy enough actually it's not crazy if somebody was ambitious enough and wanted to start their own business right now what three bits of advice would you give them firstly find so I actually sit off the Henry Ford model of business startup Henry Ford couldn't physically build cars. He just found people who could. You need a key team. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Who raves and, and waves. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he used to go raving, you know. Ask him afterwards. <laughs> yeah, you and I, we're still going to do that. So, so, yeah. fight, so, fight, fight, so get a key team around you. Get a key team around you because actually you can't do it on your own. Yeah. And actually, some businesses operate within that, but you will always have a ceiling point of what you know within it. And whether you are working on your own or not, actually find people to support you yeah, it remotely, yeah. hence what you're doing with my lovely networking and social media yeah. and all of that. I need people to do that. Yeah. You can't assume you know it. Yeah. Um, secondly, network. Get out there, talk out there. about what you do. You know, you have to, because if you don't believe in what you do, then quite frankly, nobody else is going to. Exactly. You know, and, and having that is a key part of what you do. And actually I'm looking around my desk and it's going to be here, within here. This is backwards to you. I can, oh, it's, it's actually showing the right way around. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So, in the core of that, it says well-being. Boom. My third top tip, focus on it. Yeah. Keep it 
yeah. key to who you are yeah. because actually if you don't look after yourself you cannot hope to run a business yeah. because the business will become all encompassing yeah. you need sleep you need exercise eat well meet people do fun things spend time away from it yeah. because otherwise you'll just drown yeah i've said the same thing to my brother this morning actually because he's been given an opportunity which means that uh, yes he's making more money but his, his time has gone from well he's got no time now I says, yeah. make sure you don't burn out make sure you take a step back um because it's easy to kind of keep going and it's not even just downtime to to pamper yourself it's like it's sometimes it's just downtime where you can turn your brain off yeah and just let it refresh and recharge and you can't always get that from just going to bed and sleeping you know sometimes no, you need to it. napoleon does think and grow rich that's all about the downtime isn't yeah. it yeah to actually focus on what you're doing. And if you don't think about it, if you don't allow yourself that thinking space, you'll not actually be able to process A, what's happening, yeah. or B, how you're going to move forward next. Exactly, exactly. So. Oh, fantastic. Right, Helen, is there oh. anything that the people watching, listening, lurking, who watch later on, is there anything that they can do to help you right now? So, things that people can do are, I want you first and foremost to know who's in your own street, you know, just get out there, look for the people that you don't see, because actually, I don't know where you're living or where you're going, but there will be people around you that need you. Yeah, yeah. Be brave, go and speak, set up a little community for yourself, do it, be that person, be the thought leader behind it, because that's fundamental to the combating of this death rate for 15 cigarettes a day comparison for loneliness yeah, yeah, yeah we can't do all of that but for me as a business if you resonate with what i've been talking about you are a home instead caregiver yeah i don't care how much time you've got but if it matters to you about what outcome people have in your community come and find a home instead in your area. As yeah. I said, there's 226 of us in the country. You know, there's going to be one of those offices that are on your doorstep yeah. Yeah. looking for you. Yeah. And if you are somebody who knows lonely people who want to be cared about, not just cared for, be it your family, be it your neighbour, find us, talk to us. Yeah make a difference we aren't going to be rocking up in a uniform in a tabard throwing medicine at your person and leaving again we're going to be there making them feel valued and cared about that's what's going on boom helen brown it's been an absolute pleasure my dear star, uh, i'll you tell you what you you should be on camera more often you've just held your own Woo! and the energy and the passion it's like the people watching, if they can't fail to be inspired by you, then oh, you. I, don't, I don't know what can inspire them. Guys, oh, thank you so I much for watching. That. You are inspiring. People need to watch you all the time. <laughs> I show everybody your videos. What's this guy? Just watch him. You know, you are a powerhouse of joy. Oh, That's bless how you. I refer to you. A powerhouse of joy. That's your new tagline. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, well, on that note, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say now. I'm speechless, people. <laughs> <laughs> right, Helen, don't go anywhere. Thank you so much for watching, people. And I shall see you on Thursday. We have uh, Michelle Worthington. <laughs> see you later, guys. See you later, guys. Don't go anywhere.